Hey guys, my name is Sameer and in this video I'm going to tell you how you can get interviews at top tech companies like Facebook, Google and many more. I'm currently working as a software engineer at Google. During my undergrad I've interviewed with Google, Facebook, Amazon, Airbnb and many other top tech, tech companies for either full time or internship roles. There were a lot of things that I learned during this time that helped me land those interviews and I wanted to share these things with everyone. So there are two main things you need to do in order to get an interview at these companies. The first thing you need to do is to make a good resume. I'm going to tell you how you can get make a good resume and then I'm going to show you some good resumes that got interviews at these companies, including mine. The second thing you need to do is to get your resume noticed at these companies. I'm going to tell you all about that later. But first, let's get started with the resume. The first thing that I want to talk about is the length of your resume. It should only be one page long with only the most relevant content for the role you're applying for. The reason for that is the recruiters of these companies get a lot of resumes in a day and they only spend like 5 to 10 seconds looking at your resume. So you only want to show your most relevant strengths. The only case where you can have your resume longer than one page is maybe if you have like 7-8 years of experience. Some companies will even throw out your resume before even looking at it if it's longer than one page. So let's talk about the actual content on your resume. Your first section should be about your basic information, your name, your number, your email. Do not add your address here as it's kind of irrelevant. The next section should be on your education. Do not put your high school here, only your university along with your GPA. If you have a not so good GPA, like below 7 on a scale of 10, then maybe don't put it here. In the next section, you should have all the relevant courses that you took in university and in the section after that, maybe you can add all the relevant courses you took outside of university on like Coursera or some other online platform. In the next section, you should have all the languages that you have worked with. Make sure to divide all these languages on the basis of experience that you have with them. Then you should have a work experience section where you explain your work in as much detail as you can in the limited space that you have. Try to quantify your work and explain it in points. For example, if you did a task that made the response time of a service faster, then make a point where you say you decrease the response time of the service by some X percent instead of just saying that you made it faster. Then you should have a project section with two to three projects and at least one of them should be a fairly complex project. You should describe your projects in the same way you described your work experience. Endpoints and try to quantify if possible. Add a point explaining all the technologies and the languages that you used. Try to use some buzzwords like machine learning or something as companies use a system to pass all these resumes and filter the resumes based on some of these buzzwords. You can also have a section explaining your experience with programming contests or all the hackathons you took part in and all your achievements in this area. I wrote a lot about my programming contest experience and it helped a lot in my resume standing out among others. Now let's see some example resumes. So this is the resume that I applied to Google with. Let's dissect this. As you can see, it is one page long. Most of the sections are those that I described previously. There are some things that I can improve here. So let's discuss those. As you can see, you have my name here. The blacked out part is my email address and phone number. I have a section for education. Pretty concise, only mentioning that I did BTEC in computer science, my CGPA, not taking a lot of space. Links to my profiles in various programming websites, coursework. Uh, I did not have uh, a lot of courses done outside of my university, so I just marked the one course that I did separately. I divided the programming languages that I used on the basis of my experience. I also have a section for operating system which is basically useless. I just used it to cover the space. 
Then comes my experience section, which is well described, but I would like to use some quantification here. I would probably uh, say how many problems I set and how many users solve them, something like that. Then notice the project section. I have also described them well like I did my experience, but I couldn't really quantify them. But I did use a lot of buzzwords, so take a notice of that. Next I have my programming achievement section. Contests like Google Code Jam and ACM ICPC are very famous and most recruiters know about them. So having them on your resume gives you a, an edge above other resumes. Try to quantify these as well, state your rank, give some context. The next resume belongs to a friend of mine. He interned at Facebook and this is the resume that he applied to Facebook with. As you can see, he also has some similar sections, the education section, the coursework section. He also divided the languages on the basis of his experience with them. There is a system section here which is also a good addition which you can use. Apart from that, it's similar. Describe your work experience extensively and your projects as well. So let's move on to the next resume. The next resume is my favorite. It belongs to a friend of mine who works at Google. He wanted to remain anonymous. That's why I have blacked out his basic information. As you can see the blacked out parts. He has an education section as well. Quite concise. Then if you notice his employment section, you can see it's quantified. It has like great examples of how to quantify your work. So you can have a look at this. It's really well done. Then he has a project section, which is quite good. He has a complex project. If you see the learnings part, it's all the buzzwords that you need. So this is also great. Then the competitive programming experience section, again, numbers with context. So that's also great as describing his achievements. And then lastly, the technical skills section divided on the basis of his experience with them. So now let's see how you can use that great resume that you created to actually get the interviews at these companies. The first step that you need to do, and I cannot stress this enough, is to apply online at these companies' career websites. There's no harm in doing it, it only benefits you. Apply online to a role that you think you are suitable for. It doesn't matter if you meet all the requirements or not, just apply online. Now, the most high probability way to get an interview at these companies is to get a referral from someone you know in your network or some alumni from your university maybe that you can reach out to. Reach out to them, ask them for a referral. If you're good, if you have a good resume, they have a really nice incentive to give you a referral because if you clear the interviews and join their company, they get a referral bonus, which is quite a decent amount. So try to reach out to people in your network that you think can give you a referral. You can also cold mail or message recruiters on LinkedIn. Just send an email with the role that you want to apply for, explaining why you are a good fit for that role and attach your resume. You should craft this message by yourself, but you can see the message that I used. And this method has been moderately successful for me in getting interviews. A lot of these companies conduct programming contests and challenges that they use to screen people for hiring purposes. Some examples are Google's Kickstart, Facebook's Hacker Cup, Amazon's Hacker Earth Hiring Challenge, Microsoft's Code Fund Do Hackathon, and many more. You should take part in these challenges and if you do well, you will land an interview. A lot of these challenges have competitive programming problems and I'll be posting a lot more stuff on competitive programming on this channel. So subscribe to my channel and like this video. See ya.